Hello, I'm Jeroen and welcome to the Mobile Kite Hostel. Coming from uh, from Holland, from Utrecht, and uh, I'm a kite teacher and um, a van lifer, and uh, love to uh, stay uh, on wheels. And um, yeah, that's why I uh, come up with this idea to let everybody stay on wheels and uh, give the opportunity to uh, wake up next to the beach and uh, be close to the kite spot, and uh, maybe to do some awesome downwinders. And um, yeah, that's the idea of. Uh, giving the people an opportunity to uh, stay the van life and don't have to buy a van. So uh, this is a little bit the idea of the, the project. And um, yeah, uh, I was a driving instructor for uh, 10 years and uh, now uh, teaching for seven years kite surfing already. Uh, meanwhile, while I was teaching people how to drive. So uh, then I thought uh, in Tarifa there's more wind. So uh, three years ago I went to Tarifa and there uh, I uh, started uh, kite surfing lessons in Tarifa and then I could like teach uh, five times more than I could teach in Holland. So uh, yeah, Tarifa is a really awesome spot to uh, go to because of the wind and so much wind. So yeah, it's a cool place and uh, that's why we like to come there. But in the summertime, we have the idea maybe to go to Denmark, Sweden and uh, Norway, so uh, if anybody likes uh, the idea to go to Denmark or Norwegian, we're gonna ask a little bit of the people that uh, maybe know already about some spots that would be the best spots. So it uh, took around almost seven months to make and it was uh, quite a rough build. As you can see, I just uh, put a lot of uh, recycled wood and a lot of recycled uh, materials. So. Uh, that's why uh, my uh, measurement was uh, most of the times uh, staying in the toolbox and not uh, <laughs> use that so much. But um, yeah, because it's so rustic and everything is just quickly built in, uh, in seven months because usually a project like this takes a little bit more time. Uh, but yeah, I just uh, had a lot of resources in uh, Holland. So uh, for instance, the kitchen, I got it for free on uh, second hand. Um, website and uh, yeah then I had to add some things like a special gas stove for uh, propane and as well a propane uh, heater for hot water it uh, produces 18 liters a minute uh, so it's quite a lot of water if you want to uh, take hot showers we have them as well here in this little area here it's uh, everything you want uh, toilet and shower combined and um, it's quite close to my bedroom, which I use as my uh, private bedroom. And yeah, it's uh, still needs to be done a little bit here and there, like closet doors. And there's always things if, uh, if there's no wind, we are building. So uh, <laughs> it depends how it goes. Uh, but most of the time, uh, yeah, we're kite surfing the last six, seven months uh, and not so much building. But we did many projects like the wood stove here. This is made out of uh, gas bottles and uh, old boating window. So, um, yeah, for the cold days, we even have a <coughs> movable uh, wood place because normally in the summer this goes away. It's like two bolts and then it goes onto the couch. Perfect. And uh, yeah, then you keep the space because still we have a big space, but every space is really 
yeah, precious to us. So we try to use it as good as we can. So that's why I came up with the idea to make uh, some sort of a bunk bed, but still with the privacy. So you have there uh, a nice bed for uh, two meters tall and uh, one meter 40 wide. And um, the headspace is uh, about 70 centimeters or 80. And then we have another room that is underneath. So we use the space a little bit to uh, make as much space as possible in the rooms. And a little bit of artwork in all the windows. And every morning you can wake up and, and every your head morning out. can uh, pop your head out and every room has like three uh, boat windows. And uh, yeah, this view up here is amazing. And then we have here the, the terrace and uh, bar area and however you want to call it. At the moment, uh, we use it as a terrace and a garage. And uh, yeah, we have actually at the moment an extended terrace, but it's uh, just for at the moment. <laughs> and we're uh, busy on the city cocoa here to uh, get everybody easily over the beaches and to uh, create little downwinders because uh, yeah at the moment we're not doing our big downwinders yet but uh, so what do you offer as a kite hostel I offer uh, sleeping places I offer kite lessons and yeah some um, maybe some food even it depends on where we are uh, because we don't want to uh, waste uh, local uh, support so we if we are close to any uh, snack bar or close to uh, a restaurant, we don't want to take the business away from the from the restaurants. So uh, then we uh, stay uh, without uh, food and then it's just a hostel and you have to take your own food. But of course you can use the fridge and the freezer. We have a really big freezer. Um, so yeah, we have, a, we have a lot of space for everybody and uh, we can host up seven people. Um, so yeah, the idea is uh, as long as we're in Europe um, that we're probably hosting only people in the truck and we could go when we go to Morocco, I have a lot of pop-up tents, then we can uh, put a little tent camp up and of course when we're in good areas where we can good, do good downwinders then it's um, yeah of course really nice if we can take the stuff from the people uh, and they can just go along the beach and uh, have some nice parties uh, everywhere we stop and if the next day there's not so good wind then uh, we probably have a party that uh, that night so yeah it all depends on the wind again and uh, how everything goes so uh, and I can see the light system as well so how have you done the power system uh, the power system is a separate system it's uh, 12 volt lighting and as well, I have a 220 uh, Lightning. And the, um, there's two separate systems. So I have like over there two batteries of 240 amps. It's underneath the truck. And Are they lithium, are they? Uh, no, they're just uh, normal acid batteries uh, because I don't have to save on the weight. For me, it doesn't really cal cal count up to uh, the life expectations and everything so uh, I just know it normal normal batteries and uh, then I have this like this two of two for, uh, 40 amps and then I have the 220 packages for batteries of 240 amps okay so and people can charge their phones and you've got yeah like, yeah I have a lot socket, yeah. a lot of uh, sockets and uh, socket, yeah. yeah every sleeping room has a socket as well and yeah we have um, a converter of Victron in it so it's like uh, yeah. 3000 watts of uh, yeah good uh, purified energy with a purified sinus you know so you don't get your equipment uh, here that's gonna get broken so uh, yeah we also have a microwave oven nice. so this microwave oven that is the reason why I uh, had to get so many batteries because uh, so yeah all it is the solar. all running off the solar and that's why I have eight solar panels of 320 watt wow so it's uh, quite a lot and uh, more than we need actually so sometimes uh, we're giving away some electricity when there are sunny days and people need some electricity. So, so people can charge their phones. So that you people outside. can charge their phones yeah. and uh, a little bit taking care of the other people on the campus that didn't have this uh, opportunity. So 
yeah so uh yeah we're trying as well to provide the community a little bit and to yeah make it uh one big nice family uh idea and uh yeah to enjoy life as much as possible i would and say you so. even got the locking system i got drive. a locking system before we drive for drive it's uh working okay but it it has some improvement to to them you know but uh yeah. To be honest, uh, at the moment we are driving not as much as expected because we wanted to do, of course, this downwind is in Morocco, but since Corona we cannot do that. So yeah, yeah at the moment we're a little bit stuck at Tarifa and uh, yeah, we were waiting for some clearance to get the boat, but at the moment it uh, looks like we're going to have a nice summertime coming up in the northern part of Europe. So yeah, that's a little bit the idea. So I've got two bedrooms up on the side and then I got another bedroom here. That's my own bedroom. So two bedrooms which I rent out for uh, couples, that would be ideally. Uh, and as well for the more single people we have the truck to sleep in. Uh, because if you enter the truck there is as well a lot of space and you have a bunk bed for two persons. And as well there is a, a fridge included and there is as well 220 in the truck. And yeah, you actually have your own private space a little bit as well again on the beach. You got little curtains and stuff, yeah. Uh, you have curtains and you have a lot of storage places actually. Um, so yeah, because uh, the engine is down below here, actually the whole truck itself, there's everywhere closet room and space to store your stuff. So a lot of storage rooms and uh, we have as well some storage rooms underneath the trucks for your kite gear, of course. At the moment it's a little bit of building equipment because um, yeah we're still a little bit building sometimes and we don't have the full uh, customers as we have it normally with Corona. At the moment it's a little bit uh, of a construction place. So yeah we have a lot of planks to uh, make some uh, art and make some, uh, some people happy. Yeah and then uh, it, it walks through the whole uh, other way. And then if we go to the other side and we have to walk like that, then... Um, and miles a gallon, this must be chewing up fuel. Like, it, you know. it, it's okay actually, it's, yeah. it's okay. It drives one out of six, so you're, compared to your, your camper, it's driving like one out of 12. Yeah. So it's like the half of it, but you got like three times more the space, you know? So yeah. in total, it's, it's calculating up to it. So. And yeah, uh, this is the other storage. And at the moment we do have some kite equipment there. Um, but we are waiting actually for some brands to, uh, some kite brands to work together with. And uh, at the moment it's... Uh, so if anyone who owns a kite brand is watching this, get in touch. Yeah, it's the best advertisement you can have, I guessing. I mean, uh, I could even make some advertisement on the side. I mean, at the moment, uh, we have to repaint it a little bit because uh, I did it with ecological paint. And um, yeah, it let go after a while and then rain and stuff. So yeah, we're thinking uh, to repaint it uh, one of these days and then some advertisement. Uh, the idea is to make a little kite surfer there with the kite brand we are we are uh, exactly. yeah exactly. doing it for. And so you've got an uh, outdoor wash. Yeah, yeah, indeed. We have here an outdoor wash and uh, wash equipment or if people just wash want to equipment or just take a shower outside as well. That doesn't matter. And then as well we have. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to see this. It's the bucket system. Yes. Yeah, so. so this system is uh, for the for the toilet. Okay. And then uh, this one is from the shower and uh, the sink. So wastewater. Uh, yeah. Like so water, yeah. and then this one is not for the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And so it really depends of what I'm, yeah, uh, washing. You know, like if yeah. I have a lot of dirty uh, stuff what I'm washing, I could like flush. I take one bucket and I put it up and flush the toilet with it. I mean, I could flush as well normally, uh, but this way I have the, the, the opportunity to recycle my water easier and divide what I want to reuse kind of water. Um, so it gives you a little bit more options. And yeah, as well, I can as well easily put it, close it. I just have to put the cap on there and at the moment it looks a bit disgusting, but didn't use it for quite a while and then yeah. here uh, you just put the cap on and actually this is the beginning for the 
floor heating because I have a wood stove in the truck and the idea was if I will go to colder regions uh, that I will attach this to my floor heating. Um, then the floor heating will run on the wood stove and then uh, yeah supposedly because I uh, surrounded it a lot of times with my dirty water tanks and with my uh, sewage system that it doesn't freeze up and that uh, we can stand up to uh, like minus 40 or minus 30 degrees so that's a bit of the idea I mean the fresh water tanks are already inside so that makes a big difference but the grey water tanks you obviously want to do it outside so that's yeah if it freezes over your toilet will explode and uh, yeah got the genius in the from uh, from a Swiss cabin somewhere and then I thought okay I could make something like this uh, with uh, yeah the floor heating tubes and uh, just circulate it through so that's the idea a bit of uh, reusing and uh, yeah making it uh, self-sufficient and uh, yeah capable of standing everywhere because uh, nine of the ten places you do have some wood actually this wood here in the in the forest also is really uh, really dry normally even if it have been raining it's uh, still good to burn so and uh and the stands do you ever put those down i've just noticed them there uh the stands yeah i do put them down once i um, you found a place to stop when i found a place to stop and um yeah for instance the idea was that i want to make a big water tank in the middle uh, of my cabin so there's going to come over here you can pull this off like this and then it's going to come here there's a it's going to come a water tank nice and then um, yeah the idea is i have a friend of mine is designing it of 2000 liters of water so i hope we're gonna reach that amount and for at the moment we have 700 liters of water so still enough though. it's still enough for uh, many showers and uh, yeah we are uh, quite good in that so uh, yeah Perfect. Thank you.